Hello everybody, this is Diego Brando on Magic Online. And uh, today we're going to be doing a little guide to Stompy and sideboarding and just uh, what hands to keep. Uh, I'm actually doing this halfway through a league. I'm one and one. Lost to elves, I believe. No, er, yeah, it was elves, which I believe is a bad matchup, but if we face elves, I'll get more into it. This might be the mirror. Might be the mirror or slivers. I just beat slivers, which I believe is an even matchup, but yeah. Alright, it's elves. That's bad news, but on the bright side, they didn't have any turn one. Alright. I don't think they can, if they didn't have a turn one, or maybe they were waiting for it. I don't know, but either way, I'm going to use this chance to get Skarg and Pitskull down. Okay, well wisher. I'm glad I didn't spend my Alright, that's actually the best possible draw. But yeah, so Oh, I did that wrong. Sorry, it's very early in the morning, but I should have done it on Skark and Pitskulk. Uh just because they can chump with Lanwar Elves. Or double walk even. I doubt they double walk or even chump. But uh, yeah. Either way, still a misplay. Because you want the guaranteed damage over uh, potential damage most of the time. Alright, so now we have a little bit of a problem in that Elvish Vanguard is larger than our Skarg and Pitskulk and will likely stay that way. Uh, but luckily for us, we have lethal. So this list, I'm using BNP's list, which top four or er, top four to challenge. It was either top four or top eighted, uh, but because early Stompy people who knew me will know that I really love Wild Mongrel and have been insisting that Vines of Vastwood being the best card in the deck. Uh, should be a four of, and it ran for Vines of Astwood. It also cut Elephant Guide, which I think is smart because there's a lot of blue red in the meta, and Elephant Guide is absolutely uh. uh yeah, but Elephant Guide is absolutely terrible in that match. Uh, uh, but yeah, so against Elves, I don't love Wild Mongrel, and I don't love Nest Invader. Uh, Wild Mongrel because... Yeah, I actually have music playing in the background, but I muted my computer audio, so hopefully it should be okay. Uh, but... They might hear it on my headphones. Let me uh, turn down the volume. No. Function. But, uh, yeah. Just, we have, we're bringing in five removal spells. So, Nest Invader is less necessary. Uh, yeah, outside of that, yeah, maybe one more Wild Mongrel. Some people board in Longbow. I think if you're at the point in the game where you... I pretty much only bring in Longbow versus Tron. Because we have five removal spells. 
And going down to 23 creatures is already risky enough because, well, creature density is less important in this matchup, but it's still important in Stompy in general. Uh, Alright, so Virtual Rangers. That's not actually turn one gut shottable now that we've drawn hunger. If it was a mana dork, then I would consider it, but yeah. Alright, Essence Warden is very gut shottable. Priest to Titania. Almost equally gut shottable, especially since we're going to be putting another elf on the battlefield. Yes. Alright, move to combat. Get in. They won't block. Gut shot. Could have also gut shot a uh, virtual ranger, but I just really essence warden really does slow down your game plan, and in this matchup, can't have that. All right, lead the stampede. So priest is gonna be a pain. Uh, well wisher and timber watch elf. And Quirion Ranger. Yeah, so they're just going to be able to splurge their hand. And their hand includes the worst cards for us. Quirion Ranger and Timberwatch and Wellwisher is just nigh unbeatable. Oh, and they have Distant Melody. Alright, yeah, so that's going to be the end for us. Maybe I should have... So this is where my expertise... <laughs> if you can call it that, starts to run a little dry is matchups where what to gut shot in certain matchups uh... But yeah I'll try one Viridian Longbow. Just again, as I said before, if you're at the point where you're where you have Viridian Longbow, unless you've really stabilized the board state but don't have a lot of creatures out. Uh, usually if you can stabilize the board state using removal spells, you're good. Okay, this is a very good hand. We have two Savage Swipes, and uh, which is our best card in the matchup, and a Vault Scourge, and Skark and Pitskulk, which are our two best creatures in the matchup, because Pitskulk gets over almost everything in their deck. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so there's a case for swiping the query in here. I don't think it's a particularly strong case, but it is a case nonetheless. But yeah. Korean is always bad for us. There's never a case where a Korean Ranger is welcome on the battlefield. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave the land in hand just to bluff more. Uh, because vines costs two mana, I will play it out if. Uh, Alright, yep. They get chump walker. We really need a green spell here. Alright, they get another forest. They get scattershot archer. That is a pain. 
But now that we have another Scargan Pit Skulk, I don't think it's enough of a pain to warrant. Yeah. There's just so many things that we would rather uh, swipe. Like, yeah, they kill our Vault Scourge, but they might not even until our turn because we can represent hunger. Alright, they do do it. Alright, they untap. They play... Timber Watch Elf, and this is why we save our Savage Swipe, because we really want to just deal with high priority targets. That's the thing in this matchup, is high priority targets. And Timber Watch is one of them. Uh, so we're going to get in with everything here. If they don't block, we win. Alright, they block. They double block. Uh, hmm. I'm actually just going to... This lowers their elf count substan substantially. And leaves us with a creature. But yeah. Alright, Vanguard's a pain because it can block our Pit Skulk. But if they only have one, yeah, so we win. Yep. Well, we didn't win outright. It might have been a little premature for our opponent to concede there, but we were very close to winning. And let's see what our next card was. We would have won. Because rank or on, yeah. So we snuck a uh, win out versus elves there. I do believe Elves is one of our worst matchups. We drew a bunch of sideboard cards and just our good cards. Let's see, we drew two Gut Shots and two Savage Swipes, alongside having two Pit Skulks and a Vault Scourge. So yeah, we really... We were pretty lucky there. That game could have gone either way had we not drawn well. That's the thing with post-board uh, versus elves, is you have a ton of fantastic cards. And that's why, th that's why I think elves is more even. Game 1 versus elves, uh, it's almost always a loss unless you... Well, not almost always a loss. It's unfavorable unless you have two Savage Swipes. Uh, and they, or they draw poorly and have one, you have one savage swipe. Cause you need, an elves keep usually has, even uh, like the worst elves keep within like the first few mulligans. We can't keep this, it has no lands, we are on the play. I've kept one of my stompy top eights, I got it by keeping a no land hand on the draw because it was so good in the mirror, but yeah. Um, so here, I'm actually going to ditch Nest Invader because Quarian Ranger and Wild Mongrel work so well in tandem. And yeah. All right, is it burn? Or is it Boros? If it's Burn, we just need Savage Swipe to win. Burn is a incredibly favorable matchup. All right, Pit Skulk. Pit Skulk. These are good because they're unblockable by Thermo. Unfortunately, they're not unblockable by, yeah. So I'm guessing they play another mountain, drop, turn two Thermo if they're Burn. Uh, if they're Boros, they probably would have bolted something. Yeah, so they have, they are Burn. Uh, so, okay, so here's how we're going to do it. Uh, so, 
Swing in, even with Korean Ranger, just for the bluff factor. Yep, they don't block. You always gotta get that bluff factor. Because they never know, and they always value that uh, Thermal Alchemist over a lot of things. Uh, Scourge. So if they have Syrian Blaze, that's going to punish us real hard for the Scourge, because it's effectively dealing in total 8 damage, 3 of which just happens to be, or 9 damage because of the Thermal Alchemist, 3 damage. Yeah, so they Syrian Blaze are Scourge, punishing us. But having that land in hand means it's one less point of burn. Problem is, we are, yeah, alright. Right now, this isn't scary. At all. Uh, alright, we win. It's a nice thing about winning. Yep. Are they gonna fire blast? Yeah, fire blast was their one out. And they either didn't want to risk it, which they should have risked it. If they had it. So we are going to untap Wild Mongrel, play out Nell Sentinel. That way we can block and or trade, not trade or kill a Gitu Lava Runner if they block with it. But yeah, we're very close to winning here. We just need them to not kill us, which is a lot to ask. Okay, Needle Drop is good. Needle Drop is very good. Two needle drops is even better. They need mountain double fire blast. And if they had a fire blast, they would have prevented their. I believe they would have prevented their thermal alchemist from dying. Though they did have two needle drops in hand. Well, there's the mountain, so do you have double fire blast, opponent? If so, that's just a lucky draw for them. Alright. Opponent can block however they want, but they have to bolt. Alright, they walk there. We discard. Yep, they bolt. That's a point of burn that isn't going at our face. They can still win by just triple bolting us. They can't. Syrian Blaze isn't live for them unless they Syrian Blaze Bolt Fire Blast. But again, I don't know that they Fire Blast. Or that they have Fire Blast unless they. Yeah. Alright. I think Burn is a favorable matchup. Because we are one of the few decks that can race it. So, Epic Confrontation ran through. 
Uh, Vault Scourge is very risky, but it's a often necessary risk. <sighs> Wild Mongrel's great, one of the few creatures that can survive uh, bolts. I actually go down on Korean Rangers here. Here's why. Korean Ranger is not nearly as effective versus a deck that can turn one bolt in. Most pilots, a lot of burn pilots, I won't say a lot of burn pilots are bad, but you can tell the difference between a good burn pilot and a bad burn pilot by whether or not they bolt the turn one. Yes, so I'm going to keep this, but uh, we have to be wary of turn two Syrian Blaze which hopefully they're greedy enough for, but if I were them, I would be very suspicious. All right. But yeah, so Rift Bolt comes off Suspend. All right. They thermo. Okay. So because I am just going to swipe thermo here. Yeah. We just can't let thermo stay out on the battlefield for any period of time. All right. They spike our face. Bolt our. No, they don't. Hmm. Odd. All right, I'm not going to rank over here because I want to do this, and I am going to trade with a Nell Sentinel if they attack again. I didn't do it last turn because I didn't have a guaranteed second creature, but now that I do. The problem with a Searing Blaze is that it always deals the damage to face no matter what. Alright. So we try and vines to protect it. It works. Okay. Gotta say, I was not expecting that. Keldon Marauders. Okay. So usually this is the point where I... Keldon Marauders is a weird card for Stompy. Uh, usually, if I didn't have this Vault Scourge and the vines out, and because they only have one card in hand, I am just going to leave up uh, protection. But yeah, I'm not going to block the Kelden Marauders. It's possible they keep the Kelden Marauders on defense, though I think that'd be ill-advised. Yeah, they swing in, which is the right thing to do. But either way, they're going to lose this game. can't win just yet and I'm not reckless enough to uh... yeah I'm keeping the forest back in hand uh, in case of uh, whatchamacallit that thing you know so yeah there's literally no way that they can kill us here uh, their best shot is killing our vault scourge Alright, so that's, they lead with the sorcery speed, follow up with the instant speed. Oh, never mind, they just concede. Yeah, we got lucky in having double vines there, uh, but there were a number of roadblocks that our opponent threw in front of us. Uh, but yeah, burn. Want as much removal as you can. Uh, it's a favorable matchup because you can race them. You're one of the few decks in the format that can race them. 
I don't know about Boggles vs. Burn, because I'm not a Boggles expert, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, just for those watching, this is my current list. It's the exact same as BNP's. I'm still not certain about Ram Through, because I do like Epic Confrontation, but Ram Through is a lot safer. But yeah, Epic Confrontation I like because it can set up for a literal 1-2 punch <laughs> uh, with like a 1-1 one -one and a Savage Swipe. Because you Epic Confrontation, it's now a 2-3. Savage Swipe, it's now a 4-5, which means it can trade with, affin er, it can kill affinity creatures. I always say trade when it's not a trade. I don't know why, it's just a bad habit I picked up somewhere. Also, we, we don't want to run to affinity because it is by far our worst matchup, and I will die on that hill. People will say Fogtron. Those people are wrong. We have five Fogtron sideboard slots. We do have five sideboard affinity slots, but sometimes they just draw the lands if we blow them up. Affinity is our worst matchup. And that's for two reasons. One of them is Atog. Atog a late game ATOG or a mid game ATOG. Like turn two ATOG on the uh if they haven't played anything but their lands and they drop a turn two ATOG, you can game one you can Savage Swipe it. Also never keep in Savage Swipe. Always cut Savage Swipe in that matchup. Because uh Alright, this hand's great. Uh, but yeah, always cut Savage Swipe in that matchup, because if you, but yeah, they also can do the annoying thing, but yeah, there's three annoying interactions that I can think of. One of is the Elf, uh, Carapace Forger, completely shuts down early aggro if they play a one-drop artifact. Uh... And you need Rancor to... Uh, tr even trade with it. Uh, Elephant Guide helps a bit in that matchup, but okay, so it's Burn. This is totally fine. Uh, because we have Swipe. And we have two Swipe, okay. Uh, so yeah. And we're going to be able to make it so the Vault Scourge uh, that we play is going to be out of bolt range. It can still be blasted, but either way, even if we did it on Nest Invader so it couldn't be blasted, uh, it either way it ends up... Yeah, so they're going to Syrian Blaze our Vault Scourge here most likely. If they don't, then we're in a very favorable position. I don't think I've opened uh, this avatar yet, but, or even if it's an openable avatar, maybe it's like a new account avatar, which wouldn't surprise me. Okay, they Lava Spike Face, then Skewer My Vault Scourge. They've got to have something they can point at my Vault Scourge. They Skewer My Face. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Confidence. To quote JoJo's, I like your spunk, kid. I think that's what Rohan says. I forget. He also said, Daga Kotuar. Because I am a massive weeb. Okay, we win. Now Double Bolt doesn't kill this Vault Scourge. You can concede now, opponent. It's okay. 
yeah. That was a fantastic hand. I would like to... I'd like to thank my hand, the fantastic director, uh, all the cast and crew. Yeah, epic. Yeah. We no longer, I no longer run Weathers just because the matchup is so good. And Weather the Storm is not, we want, how to put this, Weather the Storm is not really coherent with the Stompy game plan. You want to, you don't want to have to leave up two mana for Weather the Storm. You want to splurge all your creatures and kill all of theirs. But yeah, so, epics, uh, and as always, cut to Quarians. It's a pain that, uh, my guide only extended to two decks, but, I mean, it's leagues, there's always going to be an infestation of burn. It's also a pain that I lost round one. I beat slivers, right? Yeah, I beat slivers. Alright, I'm gonna keep this. It's not a great hand, but if we draw into... It's on the draw that I like it. And Savage Swipe. But yeah. I like it on the draw because of this wild mongrel. Because even if we draw garbage, uh, it's just more wild mongrel fodder. Though you gotta be careful. Okay, so we draw good. Cool. Uh, issue here is that they can turn to Syrian Blaze. Uh, but either way, we don't really care because that would delay a Thermal Alchemist to turn and then give us a window to swipe that Thermo Alchemist, even on the draw. All right, they chain lightning it, so they're playing right. Uh, so right now they have the prisoner's dilemma, I'm guessing, of playing a land, following up with a burn spell to maximize their damage, or to hope to draw into a land for the Searing Blaze that they or, mm, no, if they had Searing Blaze, they would have just Searing Blaze. Or, would they have? Hmm. Once again, we're faced with a dilemma. Alright, so. Nest Invader. Yeah, so we have two Wild Mongrels. I don't know if I want to discard Mongrel to Mongrel. Uh, already. And if they serum blaze my, okay, they just lava spike my face. Let's see what we draw before deciding what to do. But either way, I think we trade here. If they give us the option. Yep. So now we have to weigh whether we, depending on what we draw, uh, we have to weigh whether we want to use the Eldrazi spawn. I think we do sack the Eldrazi spawn because we have Savage Swipe. But yeah. So even if we draw land, we just have more fodder for wild mongrel when we can't protect it with vines. Let's see, what do we draw? Nettle Sentinel. 
I think I play out Nell Sentinel here. Because uh, we can just protect it with vines, still leave up the possibility for Hunger of the Howl Pack. And yeah, good things. Alright, do they... Oh, they just never draw us, drew a second land. Such is the plight of low land count decks. But something that, again, gives makes Stompy the best aggro deck in the format is that we run uh, so many... Like, so many one-drops and so many good one-mass spells and Quirion Ranger that we can just... We survive the best off of one land hands. And so even if we do get screwed out of mana, we can still get there. It It is, of course, a pain with Mongrel, Burning Tree, Nest Invader, but we can still... We can still sometimes turn on Hunger if we can bait our opponent correctly. Uh, and we can turn on Pitskulk, yeah. Especially post-board, if we board in gut shots. But I only do that against the Mirror and Elves. But yeah, so basically, uh, sideboard and matchup guide. So we played against... Uh, let me go to my likely terrible game... Uh, yeah. Where's my limited rating? It's that not low? That surprises me. Uh, not result. Date and time. Uh, I can't switch it. Alright, so we played against Mika ID. Uh, no, it was Tabadonk. Uh, who is that? What, that was against Elves, right? Uh, but yeah, let's just go over it one more time. So yeah, we mulligan to five here. Let me just skip to the end. No, that was against burn. Did we play burn twice in a row? Yeah, we did. And we two owed them both times? Yep. It was Caridus. Uh, but yeah, let's take a good look at game two. I forget if we won game one or not. But yeah, what hand did we keep? We kept... Uh, yeah, no, this is the one we lost, I think. But we kept Rancor, which is good against Elves. Uh, Gutshot, which is great against Elves, and Quarian Ranger. Uh, and then drew a Hunger. So we just... Their Elvish Vanguard was just too big. Or was this the Elvish Vanguard game, or did we win? I forget. But this hand is very good against Elves. The one thing to note about it is that we do have three elves of our own, so that kind of helps them go off with uh, Priest of Titania, especially if they draw a Quarian Ranger. And yeah, that's just something to be mindful of. But yeah, so... Yeah, that's just been kind of a sideboard and matchup guide for elves and... Uh, whatchamacallit words. Elves and words. Elves and burn. Uh, but yeah, as always, uh, sharing, subscribing, always appreciated. I still need to trophy, but now that I'm actually actively playing Popper again, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, but yeah, I will see you guys on the flip side. I hope this has been helpful, and yeah. Arrivederci.